So I'm going to pick your brain. So imagine if David Lynch, Eraserhead, and Blue Velvet David Lynch uh, directed a zombie movie. Just imagine the complexity of an art house zombie movie. I know, I can't even think of, uh, wrap my head around something like that. Anyway, just saw uh, Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City. And uh, it was pretty cool, actually. Um, it's like so rated below average on Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb. They're killing it. And not in a good way. Because we're so jaded. We expect every movie now to be like, um, you know, a Marvel Aven Avengers film. Even if it's like a horror movie. Something like, you know, out of James Cameron's world. Uh, we have to just understand what... Resident Evil is. It's a zombie movie. Remember zombie movies? Night of the Living Dead? And they were shot like on shoestring budgets. Cheap, but still excited audiences. So you gotta treat this movie like that. It's a horror movie. So this, so delete everything you know about Resident Evil, the movies. Uh, all the Mila Jovovich ones. Um, has nothing to do with them. Uh, there's action in, in these, in, in this uh, film. Uh, but horror, 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 hundred percent. It's funny. It's uh, it's like a uh, a fan film, like a fan film. The fan director got like a crap load of money. It was like here, make your own Resident Evil movie. So uh, that's what it feels like. So the uh, director uh, Johannes Roberts, who did uh, Forty Seven Meters Down, it's like a killer shark movie. And uh, The Strangers Pray at Night. I, I enjoyed that one. Um, yeah, he did this. And he definitely brought that kind of dark... The movie was dark. As in, like, the lighting and stuff. Uh, and darkly toned. Um, it took a lot of... So many fan favorite, you know, fan service moments in this. A lot of Easter egg drops here and there. Uh, there's a pre-credit sequence, which is awesome. Uh, introduces a lot of characters we all know from Resident Evil. So if you know Resident Evil, the games, especially like the remakes, there's a really creepy character, uh, Lisa Trevor. If you guys played the remake of Resident Evil 1 in the mansion, uh, you'll know who I'm talking about. Really creepy, poor story, you know, tragic, you know, freak show type girl. But um, she's in this, and it's... How they utilize her in the story. It's pretty cool. So this director had a tough job. He had to combine Resident Evil 1 and 2. The games. Together. So you get. You know. The, the police station. Uh, the city. Parts of it anyway. Um, and you get the mansion. And the. Uh, you know. Uh, the, you know the, the surroundings of the mansion. Uh, the hills and uh, the forest. You get all the characters we know and love. Now, do they resemble people from the game or the you know movies with uh, Milo Jovovich? Not quite, but I mean, I feel like the Resident Evil movies uh, that were you know starring Milo Jovovich also you know uh, had a lot of flair, big budget, kind of took on its own. Liberty to uh, create a story within Resident Evil, you know, but not really verbatim, and that's what this did. This, it, it, it did stray off the track a little bit. You had a, not even its own element. You just had things filmed, like in different ways, pretty much. And I guess when it comes to video games being made into movies, it's hard to follow a story straight on because you know you got to think when you're playing a video game, it's not. It's you. It's real life. You know, it's broken down. Loading screens, this and that. You know, so to make that into like, you know, an hour or so movie, it's probably a little hard to transcript the screen. But like I said, this guy pays a lot of fan service. There's a lot of, like, you know, Easter eggs and stuff you would normally see in the video game brought to life. So a lot of kudos, a lot of credit for that. Um... The strength of this movie is definitely that. Um, the use of practical effects, which I like. The zombies look like zombies and not like, 
you know, superhuman uh, creatures from the abyss. Um, it, it worked. There was generally some creepy moments. Uh, watch it in the dark. You'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, just to heighten the experience. It, it felt like a horror movie. I think it would have worked way better if this was released like in, you know, 1999 or 2008, 2018. It definitely has that. See, I have an appreciation for B-movies. Some people don't. But this definitely is one of them. But a little better scale. Now, it's not a grandioso film. Like, you know, um, Resident Evil, you know, the series with uh, Mila Jovovich. Just don't even, like I said, leave them out. You know, this is a uh, starting a new, a fresh take on it. And definitely goes in the hard direction, which I like. Like I said, there is action where it's needed. Um, and it helps the story progress. But very strong on the horror and the gore. And, you know, it's... You know, it's, and I appreciate that. I like seeing characters from the video games, even just for like a brief moment. Like, you know, and if you do see it, or I think it's even the trailer, you'll know what I'm talking about. Little hints here and there. Um, like I said, it, it, it's tough because, like, I don't think he should have, you know, tackled it like he did because he's really telling two separate stories into one. So that just seems challenging on its own. But he... He did pull it off. It was very exciting. The liftoff from the get-go kind of hooked me in. The story is kind of all over the place, so but it, like I said, it's exciting. Not every character is to the T and how I would like it, or maybe a, you know a fan of the of the video games would probably like it. But for what it was, I think it, a lot better close. Um, you know, when it comes to the video games uh, rendition as opposed to the other movies. Um, like I said, this is its own beast, and, uh, it's just, it's fun. It's a fun zombie horror movie. Uh, yeah, there's a few, you know, lighthearted comedic moments, but, you know, it's not over the top. It works. Like I said, it really drives that horror factor, which I love. I can't, you know, um, stress that enough. I think it's great. And, um, yeah, it's definitely, uh, I mean... When I watch it again, if it's on, but uh, definitely, you know, view it in the best format possible. I watched it in uh, 4K, and like I said, it's great. The, the visuals pop. The settings are awesome. Raccoon City isn't, is a, it kind of looked like a, like a, like a coastal town. Because with this is, it's like, the story goes like, you know, Umbrella's pulling out of this dead end city. And all kind of chaos erupts. Now, what I would like to see is, okay, we get what's going on. We all seen the games before. We're introduced to the characters. We know who's going to run into who and what happens to who. Uh, uh, this them and that person, whatever. Um, but there's no really explanation on how the you know the virus, the T virus, got out or the G virus. There's one scene where you know. The boss character, William Birkin, I guess you would say. Uh, we see what happens to him, how he gets taken out. Um, and some characters are treated different, you know. I guess for a setup for a sequel maybe, because it definitely, the ending is very ambiguous. It definitely, you know, feels like more more stories to be told, put it that way. And there's a pre credit sequence that definitely, you know, suggests that. Uh, spoiler alert, and Ada Wong is in that, by the way. Wesker, Chris Redfield, they're all here. Jill, all of them are here. Uh, I didn't see Barry. You know, if, if he wasn't it, I missed him, but I don't... Like I said, there's a few characters that are missing. A few that character, minor characters that make an appearance. So it's, you know, the guy tries. Like I said, this looks like it, it was probably a headache from the start, but he made it work. But yeah, um, so yeah, I guess I should probably just segue into that. Uh, the weaknesses. Obviously, CGI. I mean, this guy spent a lot of money probably on the rights and the costumes, sort of, kind of, and just to try to get the setting right and probably special effects. But CGI, like, you know, I know it's not James Cameron level or Marvel level. So if you can forgive that, then you, you'll enjoy this movie. But it definitely... 
leaves a lot to the imagination. And, you know, you feel like, yeah, it's 2021, almost 2022. You definitely do a little bit better with the CGI. But uh, like I said, um, who am I? You know, the guy was working with what he had. So I'm not mad at the guy. Uh, if anything, like I said, it helped tell the story. What CGI was used was to amplify amplify certain scenes, but also to, uh, you know, show some characters that probably would have done better in practical. But I don't know. That's just a little, little nitpick for me. Uh, also, um, if you guys know me, I'm a stickler for endings. The ending is a lot left to be desired. Because the, the beginning was fine. The whole setup was great. The middle, close to the end. It's just, I feel like it was kind of rushed. But um, at the same time, it, the things I wanted to see, you know, were there. Like I said, there's a lot more going on that I wish I would have seen. Like, just how did the virus get out? That it just one day was that it just you know happened. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I feel like that could have been worked on a little bit, a little fleshed out. Maybe it'll be a you know unrated director's cut when it comes to Blu-ray. Who knows? Uh, definitely left it open for a sequel. I think. You know, uh, the director might tackle if he decides to make another one. Uh, just there's a lot of hints uh, towards Code Veronica, Resident Evil 3. I'd like to see the Nemesis tackled again. That might be a challenge on its own, but, you know, it'd be interesting. And, uh, you know, whatever the series, whatever direction he wants to take the series, uh, you know, afterwards. But, um, like I said, the ending, very, very quick. You know, just right to the point. It's not like, you know, I, I don't know what I was expecting. It's not a Resident Evil game. It's a movie, but I feel like it could have maybe drawn out just a little bit more, you know. There was definitely like a fan service scene with the, involving a rocket launcher, but still, it was just too quick, you know. That, you know, it, it, it just felt like a really, really fast boss battle at the end of like a video game, whatever, but... Too quick, you know, and uh, I feel like that could have been fleshed out more. But that's about it. I mean, I guess there's going to be another one coming because, like I said, the way it left off definitely, definitely kind of hinted towards that. So, hey, I'm all for it. Um, but on that, it was great. Great, like I said, the actors don't really match up. Some of them. So if that if that's going to annoy you, then don't even bother seeing it. Um, but for what the director had to use to work with. I thought it was fine, you know. Uh, tackling uh, two stories into one, that must have been challenging on its own, but you know, he was able to make it work and carry on the story. And what I seen was very entertaining. I liked it. It, was, it felt like a, a horror movie involving a deadly infection that turned people into zombies. And that's what we got. You know, like I said, we're so like fixated on these World Bowl Z, you know, 28 Days Later, Grandioso films. But, you know, think about the guy who kind of pioneered it, uh, George Romero. You know, Night of Living Dead was shot practically on nothing. I mean, Dawn of the Dead, a little bit bigger budget, but practical and, you know, within the means. Sometimes less is more when it comes to these films, but... I delivered on both ends, uh, strength, weaknesses, I covered them both. <clears throat> At the end of the day, it, it was very entertaining. Uh, I'm glad this came out. It kind of came out really left field. It just, I just, I understand they were working on it, but I didn't hear nothing, and then boom. It's kind of like how the Matrix, Matrix, like, stop and, stop and go, and now it's going to be out, like, in a day. That was like this, but, uh... Probably would have got more of a reaction if you released it in Halloween, but like I said, given the the state of this film, especially towards the end, kind of like a rush job to me anyway. I, maybe that was his vision. Um, yeah, I think Halloween probably would have drew uh, drew more people in, but whatever. I'm glad it's out. I'm glad I got a chance to see it. It's fun. Um, if you like zombie movies, horror zombie movies, gore, blood, definitely. You know, check it out. I I recommend it. Just don't expect uh, a class movie like the the Resident Evils that we saw. You know, growing up with Milovich and uh, 
crew. Um, this is its own beast. More video game, more horror, definitely in that direction. So if that's your bag, go for it. You will not be disappointed. <coughs> um, other than that, um, like I said, I want to see what comes next. I hope uh, it gets better as you know the director expands the palette here and see if he wants to anyway, which direction is going to uh, come next. I think he's hinting towards Resident Evil 3 and Code Veronica, so sky's the limit, I guess. He made this happen, right? So let's see. All right, guys. Um, so yeah, that's my little review on uh, Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Uh, check it out if you haven't. Like I said, if you enjoy, you know, horror, zombie movies, this is right up your alley. And uh, you just, you know, keep that in mind. That's what you're seeing. That's the bill. You know, that's the, that's the ticket. So, uh, there you go. Have fun. Uh, I think it's cool if you maybe, you know, you want to, like, play the game so you get familiar. Because definitely this is, you know, like I said, like, it's, it, it's, it helps if you kind of know the story. Whereas the other ones kind of, like, it was like a soft introduction. This kind of, you know, builds on the game universe a lot more than the previous movie. So just keep that in mind. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, see you all uh, very, very soon. All right, peace.